That exclusive first interview with Matt Titeo, the star player who led Notre Dame to the championship this year, all the while telling the emotional story of how he lost both his grandmother and his girlfriend within six hours. Except the girlfriend, who was said to have died of leukemia, was never real. Ever since this story broke, people have been asking, was Teo the victim or the perpetrator of this hoax? For the first time, Teo is telling his side of the story as he prepares for the NFL draft in Florida. Our coverage starts this morning with ABC's Matt Gutman, who is in Miami. Good morning to you, Matt. Hey, good morning, Dan and Bianna. Manti Teo says it was a cruelly intricate hoax that he was led to believe that he was in love with a woman who'd suffered the death of her father, this terrible car wreck that left her in a coma, and then was diagnosed with leukemia. All of this spanning parts of four years, hundreds of hours of phone conversations. It even involved accomplices. For the first time this morning, Manti Teo setting the record straight. For the record, once again, were you in any way part of this? No, never. The star Notre Dame linebacker in hiding since the news of the so-called catfish hoax broke, confessing to our sister network ESPN's Jeremy Schapp. I even knew that it was crazy that I was with somebody that I didn't meet, let alone people find out that this girl who died, who I was so uh, invested in, I didn't meet her as as well. So I, I kind of, you know, tailored my stories to you know, have people think that, yeah, he met her um, before she passed away so that people wouldn't think I was some crazy dude. She was Lene Kakua, whom he called the love of his life after announcing to the world she died of cancer on the same September day his grandmother passed away. According to Teo, she was the cruel alchemy of one man's imagination. Ultimately, several lanes on the information superhighway would lead to Renaya Tuisosopo, as seen here in a photo obtained by Deadspin. Teo says he didn't suspect anything was wrong until he received that phone call on December 6th, a woman claiming to be Kakua nearly three months after her alleged death. He said, it's Lene. And so we carried on that conversation, and I just got mad, and I just went on a rampage. Like, how could you do this to me? Like, I ended that conversation by saying simply this. You know what? Lene, my Lene died on September 12th. Now, ABC News did not reach to a Sosopo for a comment, and we still don't know what motivated him to do this. Now, Manti Teo says that he didn't fully believe that all of this was a lie until three days ago when Tua Sosopo called him to apologize. Dan, Biana. All right, Matt Gutman, our thanks to you. And ESPN's Jeremy Schapp was the only reporter to sit down with Manti Teo and speak with him exclusively. Jeremy, you spent two and a half hours with Manti, but this obviously was just an audio interview. Can you tell us what his demeanor was like? Well, um, I have to say I was very impressed throughout our interview. He was very composed, collected. He never hesitated. He answered every question I asked. Uh, I think we were in there, as you said, for about 150 minutes by one count back at our office. He was asked more than 300 questions in that time. Uh, he never demurred. You sat there with him for two and a half hours. Did you walk away with the impression that he was part of this hoax or he was purely the victim of the hoax? He convinced me that he was not party to this hoax. Uh, people will have to make their own judgments once they read a lot of the material from the interview that we're posting online and presenting uh, on, on shows today on ESPN. Um, but, you know, there were certainly occasions uh, on which he admitted to, uh, to misleading reporters over the course of the last few months. He said that he had lied to his father about meeting uh, Lene Kukua in person. And um, those were some of the discrepancies, uh, some of the conflicts that people had pointed to over the last few days. And I think he went a long way toward explaining uh, some of those discrepancies, uh, but probably not to the satisfaction of everyone. And Jeremy, he may have explained some of the discrepancies, but you have to admit, this is still such a bizarre story. What happens to him next? Will he be drafted by the NFL or will teams shy away from him now? Well, there's no doubt that Manti Teo is going to be drafted. Um, and I think there's little doubt that he'll be drafted in the first half of the first round. 
uh, whether he will be a top three or four pick as he was projected by some to be. I mean, I think if his story is out there and people believe his story, um, it will not affect his draft position. He will be a millionaire very soon. And even if some of those NFL executives don't believe it fully, um, he'll still be a millionaire very soon. Jeremy Schapp with the first exclusive interview with Manti Teo at the center of such a big controversy this morning. Jeremy, a big thank you to you.